for another edition of uh, Focus on Jacksonville. I'm Keith Johnson, and we're over here at Dale Roberts Instrument Repair Shop. We're in for a treat for those of you music lovers who haven't had a chance to see it yet, and you'll be invited down later to get your own tour, but Dale is going to show you how he fixes all kinds of guitars. So come with me on into the store. Let's have a good time together. Dale Roberts? Yes. Nice to meet you, Dale. I'm Keith Johnson. Hi, nice to meet you. Come over to take a look at your shop. Now, tell me what your shop is. Uh, basically, we build and repair guitars here. I mean, that's primarily what we do. Build them from the ground up. Can you make any kind of guitar? Yes, sir. Sure can. And do you make them custom or...? Uh... Everyone is custom. Every, Everyone every we guitar. build, yep. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, about 25 years now. What got you started? <laughs> I had a desire to build my own guitar and I failed at it. <laughs> so I decided I'd try it again. It just looked like something fun to do. So. Do you play? Uh, yes, I do. Not professionally anymore. I gave that up. But How long ago? Uh, I haven't set foot on a stage now in uh, 10 years. Any reason? just got tired of it. <laughs> Dedicated it to the, all this right now, building and repairing. So. Well, I wonder if you wouldn't uh, give our viewers a chance to tour your shop and see just what you do. Absolutely. So we're going to take some time to see what it takes to make and fix a guitar. After you, sir. All right, now... Stop. So Chris, what do you do here? Well, I work with Dale and uh, we do guitar repairs and build uh, custom guitars. Uh, I work, I have a full-time job where I'm a mechanic and uh, I wish that this paid enough to where that I could leave my full-time job and make a full-time job out of this. What made you get into guitar repairing? Well, Daddy played. Daddy actually played in a couple of country western bands back in the 50s and 60s. And he was a good musician. Unfortunately, I didn't learn or didn't pick up his natural mu musical traits. But I picked up working with my hands and, and building things. And uh, I played around painting guitars and doing some minor repairs in, in the 70s and uh, early 80s. And got away from it. And uh, then I met Dale, what did it about six years? Yeah. Okay. And uh, we hooked up and uh, I started working with him. And uh, while he's telling this story, um, move the camera around and look at some of these uh, on the wall. Go ahead, Chris. But I hooked up with him and uh, we became good friends. and. I've been working with him pretty much on a part-time basis, you know, for the last six years. And uh, we build custom guitars, we build acoustics and electrics, and uh, acoustics have always been my passion of uh, the country western style guitar. And uh, it was like a dream come true to be able to actually build one, and uh, we've built several since then. Now Dale says they're all kind of custom made, huh? They are. Uh, because each one is built to the owner's specifications, uh, we feel like that's an advantage over buying a big name brand because when you buy a big name brand, there's only so many models you can choose from. Now, not to say that you can't get a custom model from the big, big three, and the only problem with that is it usually adds about $3,000 more to the price. Well, for a lot less than that, we can build you a complete guitar from the ground up, and it'll be any scale that you want, any any string space, and any nut size, any neck size, uh, practically any wood 
you can think of. Uh, and we feel we have that advantage over, over the big three. Would you say that um, knowing the mechanics and engineering of the guitar is uh, very platamount to uh, being able to play it? And did you ever play professionally? No, I have played a little bit uh, over the years. Uh, I'm, I'm nowhere near the player the Dale is. Uh, but one thing, I did paint and body work for several years. And uh, the finished part of auto body repair is uh, extremely s similar to finishing wood. And, uh, you know, that, that was no problem. That was a skill I already had. I just had to apply it to the guitars. Uh, and I already had woodworking skills uh, from over the years. And it was great to get in with the master luthier and learn how you're supposed to do it right. Now, Dale, it must be hard to uh, not criticize a band when you hear it, is it? Not hard at all. No? <laughs> no sir. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> it's not hard to criticize bands, no. They're, they're pretty bad? Um, no. No, I, I, I just don't have a problem with criticizing <laughs> what I we'd don't be like. Good, we'd be good band critics. Um, I mean, I, I like all types of music, but some of it's just not worth listening to, you so know? In Jacksonville, what is the genre of the uh, of the music? Is it high class, low class, uh, country, uh, western, uh, n not country western? Jacksonville is eclectic yeah. when it comes to what style of music that's here. We, we've got a it's real popular bluegrass band and the boys are all born and raised here and uh, the name of that is Grandpa's Cough Medicine and uh, Dale works on a lot of their instruments, uh, but they're bluegrass, and I think two of them were born in Neptune Beach, mm -hmm. born and raised. I mean, it's just, just amazing. And then you've got the hard rock. Uh, we, we've got that here. And of course, you know, Molly Hatchet and Leonard Skinner came from here many, many years ago. And then you had the... Uh, Rappers, that was uh, Limp Biscuit, and uh, there's been some some uh, big name bands come out here, and it's, it's been a mixture. Uh, there's uh, Evergreen Terrace, uh, they came from here. Their, their fame and notoriety, though, is, is mostly over in Europe. Uh, Dale, did you make most of these guitars? Uh, no, I think I made those two right there. There's a base that's not quite finished. Um, all the good stuff that we've made is pretty much in people's hands. There's not a lot of stuff that is in the shop, unfortunately. It's just the way it is. When it's there, it's either hangs for a little while and somebody comes in and buys it, or it just hangs here. Those, those two guitars we've probably had now for... I don't know, a couple of years. I don't suppose that uh, you just have a normal day. I mean, every day is different, but... Yeah, I, every day is is different. Um, there's no such thing as a normal day in this field, believe me. There, I mean, there's days I wish I don't even get out of bed, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's it's like any other job, un, unfortunate, or fortunately, I should say. It's, it's not really work when you like what you do, so... No, it's not work. Um, but I mean, some days I wish I, I just never woke up, you know, things go wrong that you, you, and it might be little, but I mean, building guitars, me and Chris like to say, it's just a series of mistakes, continuous mistakes. That you work your way through. <laughs> I, I've never had anything go wrong, so I don't know what that's like, <laughs> but, um, uh, give me the address. Uh, where is this place? 9707 Beach Boulevard. And how about the phone number? Six four one one zero zero four. All right, now I think I need to have my guitar fixed. What can you do for me? Um, bring it in. Let me take a look at it. Unless you know what you need done, but I mean, we can do just about anything you can think of. I mean, from refinishing them to refretting them, pickup changes, nuts, saddles, 
whatever. So I've got that guitar sitting in the corner that I haven't touched in years. But if I brought it into you, you could uh, put it in shape. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's guitars that I tell people, you know, don't don't waste your money on because it's what it's going to cost to have me repair something. Sometimes it exceeds the value of the instrument, and it's just not worth it. I mean, there's probably nothing that we can't fix, but there's some things that I just won't fix. So it, it's more. I don't need your money that bad, you know, I'd rather have you take it and spend it on something else, like a new guitar or something like that, but... I can tell, Chris, that uh, on your counter you have various stages of, <laughs> of points of repair. Can you explain to it's us? It's a big mess. <laughs> <laughs> no. Excuse me. This is one that we're building, and uh, it's an acoustic. Tulip wood. And, uh, you know, we carve the neck and, uh, you know, the neck's not finished uh, completely. Got to make the fretboard. In fact, this is the fretboard right here. And uh, we handmade these. We saw our own, own fret. And uh, one thing about these acoustics, this is something you won't find in any other acoustic guitars. And that's our own patented idea. Uh, it consists of a lower brace and an upper brace and two carbon fiber tubes. And what it does, it makes the guitar stronger structurally. Whereas without these, then the top has to carry all the structural load and the tension of the strings. And over time, a guitar will get what we call a belly, that's where the bridge tries to roll up and the neck will move and uh, what it is, the neck block area here will tilt in because there's actually, you know, with the sound hole being right here in the middle there's uh, no reinforcement and I can show you uh, this was a top off of Gibson and uh, it gave up and you can see you know, it's lightly braced. That's what enhances the sound. But if you don't have any kind of braces inside of it, and this is one that is in a state of repair, it will get a new top and neck. But if you look at this, I can bend it. And that's the way it came from the factory. Now you actually put together every piece of the guitar. Yes, sir. And like I say, I can bend this one. And this type of guitar relies on the structure of the top. Whereas this one here, I can't bend it. And that's because of the two carbon fiber tubes. And the carbon fiber tubes are lightweight. This is not a very big piece of wood, neither is this. And it doesn't add much weight to the guitar at all. It does not hurt sound. If anything, it enhances the sound. And like I say, we've got a patent on that. And we hope this to go was, onward and upward with it. This was your idea? It was our idea, yes, sir. Well, that's exciting by itself. Uh, Dale, your card says Master Luthier. Mm -hmm. What is that? means someone that knows what they're doing, I guess. <laughs> He's going to school. I, I think it's just a title, but... That's um, why I never put it on my card. He's yeah. actually going to school. Uh, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of Luthiers out there that don't have any school. <laughs> that, that haven't gone to school. And uh, I'm one that hasn't gone to school. I've interned under him. Uh, but the thing about being a Master Luthier and having the credentials, it also affords him the ability to be able to be a factory rep and he's a factory repair rep for Gibson and Ibanez so if you have a Gibson guitar with a problem and you recently bought it you can bring it to Dale and get it repaired under warranty. I may not have been listening to the beginning of the program how long have you been doing this? I think about 25 years I mean professionally what 12 now maybe and let's let's do the address again 9707 Beach Boulevard. And the phone number? 641-1004. So who would you encourage to call you that you could help? 
everybody. <laughs> I mean, especially beginners. I mean, that's one thing that I never knew when I was playing, and I'm sure Chris was the same way. Usually, people, you just walk into a guitar store and you think whatever's on the wall is the best it's supposed to be, and that's that's all there is to it. That's what I would have thought. And I thought that right up until probably I went to school and started learning the basics about the, fixing them. Um, I never knew you had to set a guitar up, so beginners especially because, I mean, if it's not, your fingers get sore playing in the beginning, and if it's not fun, you're not going to want to continue. So that's where we come in because we can set them up where it's it's easy, your guitar will play optimal, and I mean, we do it for for beginners, your basic beginners, right up to your most seasoned professionals. So, like I said, everybody should come in at least once. In the industry, it's referred to as action, and that right is the high figure strings. But it's not just the high figure strings. It's your frets. You want all your frets to be level and smooth, and the action to be, you know, low. But not so low that the strings buzz. But that takes a professional to set that thing up. And you, you get a hold of a beginner that doesn't know this, and he buys, you know, a couple hundred dollar guitar, and he starts playing it, and the strings are high, but he doesn't realize it. So he hurts his fingers. You know, he can't do what he sees the guy do on the inst instructional tape. So he gets discouraged and puts the guitar in a corner. We try to encourage all beginners to take your guitar, whether you take it to us or somebody else, take it to a, a master luthier and get the action set. You know, I, we can't stress that enough. It's, it's the most important thing is being able to play it. It can be as pretty as the moon on, let's say, San Francisco Bay or something like that at night. But if you can't play it, all it is is just a piece of art you hang on the wall. Yeah. To my amateur eyes, that looks like an absolutely beautiful instrument. It is, and it's an excellent playing instrument as well. So, how much does it cost to come in and have an instrument like that made here? Well, I mean, unfortunately it's not cheap. And, I mean, it's cheaper than what you're going to buy in a store, but we can build those probably starting about 1300 bucks um, and I mean they can go up from there depending on how exotic you want to get for a custom guitar specifically for you that's not much money nope it's not much at all but I I'd rather have people playing them than you know I, I can build those things all day long so I'd rather have them in someone's hands and if I make a little money that's fine I'm not about I'd like to get more money but then they're just going to sit on the wall because people don't have that money to spend. Now, basses, well, that's a little different story. I mean, bass players spend crazy money to have their instruments custom made. So it, it's not much money, and you, you will get a good guitar. I guarantee it. I need to take a break. Well, Chris, having heard how we're putting together the guitar, which I think is a fascinating world and I've never been to. Uh, do something. Show us show us some repair. Show <laughs> us some some part of activity what you're doing in your company. Well this one is one that we're building. It is really close to being finished. Uh, that's Oregon Myrtle. And uh, Oregon Myrtle sides in a spruce top. And uh, Got an ebony fretboard. Dale did the little daisy inlay. Uh, that's what the customer wanted. And uh, this is one that has our patented brace system in it. And it's going to be a 12 string. That's so does this customer come in and, and say to you, I want a specific uh, guitar? Mm -hmm. And then you sit with him and and go over what he wants and, and then exactly. you start making it. Exactly. And right now, I'm just doing the, the final polishing on it and doing it that by hand. Now, Dale and Chris, I would, I'm jumping at this, but I would think that this is a master craftsman kind of thing. 
I mean, it's just not something that is done by anybody, is it? No. Um, it's one of those things where, I mean, anybody can do it, but to do it well, you've got to have some basic skills. And either you got them or you don't. Um, and that's, that's, I mean, you don't have to know how to play to build, but you have to have, I mean, fortunately, Chris has more patience than me, so <laughs> he can do things that, that just drive, I just hand it off to him and don't have to worry about it. I know his wife um, really does have more patience. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not everybody can do this and, and do it well, um, which was a blessing finding Chris because, I mean, like I said, he's one of the best fabricators I've ever seen in my life. Not to mention, when it comes to painting, I mean, hands down. I mean, it's like, here, you do it. I don't want anything to do with it, you know? That's what I see in, in putting the thing together. There's so many specific talents that are probably applied to so many other areas where you're a good painter, a good mm -hmm. plastic, a good wood bender. Some things that I've never heard of before that... Uh... Well, there's things that, you know, me even being a master luthier, I mean, I can do them all, but there's things that I don't like to do that I can't do as good as Chris, and vice versa. We're good too. So, I mean, it's... Good blend of skills. What's not his forte, I'll take. What's not my forte, I can give to him. So, it... And it's not that he, he can't do it as well as me, it's just that... You know, some people are better at other things, so we work really, really well together, and it, it's just not... You would think building a guitar is no big deal, you just take some wood and, you know, glue it together, but both of us, I mean, even to this day, I don't think there's a guitar that we've built, be it alone or together, that hasn't had some mistakes in it somewhere that we've had to correct. And I don't think you'll find a luthier in this world that will tell you any different. It's it's a series of mistakes. I mean, and I, I right down to be it a tiny little chip somewhere or something being crooked. It's just inevitable when it and handcrafted guitars are just like that, and that's what gives them their their life. You know. I guess so, the man's got to know his limitations. Huh? Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's that's a good way to put it. But you're, we always try to push him so. It gets to a point where sometimes we just go nuts, but in the end, it all at the end of the day, it all comes together, and when it's done, you just <laughs> you're just really satisfied and, and glad it's out the door, you know. Uh -huh. Now, in all your experience, give me a story, a strange story. <laughs> a strange story. Um, Funny story. <laughs> we got a lot of those. Remember, uh, clean, Chris. Oh, clean. <laughs> There's some pictures uh, on my Facebook page of a, a mom, she brought the guitar in <laughs> and it was her son's guitar and he was about 17 and he had a girlfriend that, well you know the I'd story. say it was a disgruntled relationship. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, she poured, a bunch of, she poured a bunch of art paint all over his guitar oh, and just man. rubbed it all around. And uh, it was funny. Yeah, we, we fixed it for her because uh, it was a moderately expensive guitar. And uh, we were able to strip off all the art paint, the oil paint, and the latex paint, and all that stuff that she poured on, and refinish it. And everybody was happy. But that's one story. <laughs> uh, Boy, maybe I shouldn't have asked for him. Now somebody's going to get an idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, you, those stories we run into all the time. It's usually somebody bringing their guitar in with a cracker or smashed, and it's it usually involves a uh, angry wife or girlfriend there or was spouse or something. Two college students, <laughs> and they were playing around with one of them's boyfriend's guitars, and broke the headstock off. The headstock repairs are pretty common because you've got the tension of the string pulling on the headstock. And if you bump it, it doesn't take much of a bump to cause it to crack. And we've seen them crack all the way through. Well, we can repair them. We've repaired a bunch of them. We wound up repairing that guitar three times. Yeah. Because they would go back to the dorm and I don't know what they were playing, what kind of music or whatever, but they broke the headstock a second time and then they broke it a third time. <laughs> 
And each time it broke in and another place, place other than yeah. the one we repaired. So we knew it wasn't our fault. And we just looked at them and they looked at us like this <laughs> and giggled and okay. So I think the second time we repaired it for free and the third time we gave it, we repaired it at a reduced price, just feeling bad for it. <laughs> uh, but that, that was common. Mm -hmm. and we never could get out of them what exactly they were doing with the guitars. <laughs> so there's no telling. Given the oval shape, you actually bend the wood. Yes. How do you do that? Well, we use an iron right here. It's really a simple device. You just plug it in and turn it on and it gets hot. And we'll, we'll soak the wood, get the wood somewhat wet and then when this thing's hot we just start working it around like that and uh, getting the shape in it and it is tricky we did have this one blow out which is common and hey, we hey, hey, man. we have this form right here that we use and we bend it to uh, put the piece of wood Next a little bit bowed. and uh, we just work it down like that and that's the size it it sounds easy it is easy what you do it a few times hey girl how are you doing come on in and join our uh, news program we're recording for This is my <coughs> mother's ex neighbor. I've seen you a long time. Blow mm, a little bit and straight put on it. She's a talk to everybody. <laughs> they done anything with the house? Well, they got lots of work guys over there. Got a lot of what? Work guys. Uh -huh. They took down the side trees in the front. Mm -hmm. And now they got uh, oh, foundation. Yeah, foundation issues. Yeah, she got, <laughs> she got twelves. Well, you don't like it? What? What's the shoe? 12s uh, just tear my fingers up. They're too, they're too big. Uh, me too. Okay. I mean, they, they tear mine up. So is that you what you want? Should be wider than the mediums on it because when I put lights on it, it took the sound away from it. It will. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put them on there for you. I mean, well, what do you think? Do you well, think I think I think you need to have it set up. I mean, it's. There's, there's quite a bit of relief in here, so when you're up in here and you're struggling, not to mention up here is pretty mm -hmm. pretty miserable too, so. So you think I should even go wider? Well, I'll try these. And yeah, try those first. And, I mean, I can bring this down to a point where it's going to be I told you. I comfortable. Dale, Dale set better. my guitars up for 10. Yeah, it, it, it'll definitely great. be better. Um, well, I mean, you got a little, little small. I, I, George is. I mean, he likes tens. Those are a little bit too light for me, but um, I wouldn't go any lighter than elevens. But any lighter than even then, even then, elevens are. You know, they're still better you than twelve. Well, try that, that Martin. Cup Just George has a lighter touch than me. That's why. We were talking about that actually. I mean, Martin makes a, uh, did you get your desk at home? Yeah. And, uh, this is my neighbor. Boy, I wish you'd have built that guitar mm -hmm. for me. Remember, long time, didn't I, when I talked well, to you? Well, all you had to do was put some money down. Well, I think, <laughs> I think we, I had brought that double neck in, uh -huh. and you were going to make me another double neck, but with a mandolin uh -huh. and a six string. Ooh. Instead of a, um, a 12 string, six mm -hmm. string. I think that was you. Yeah, that was me. That was you. Okay. This is one I'm building. It's gone on. now. What's your name now? Um, my name is Paula. Paula. Last name Laird. L A I R D. That's going to be a 12 string. That's heavy. Heavy because look on the keys. Um, 304 mm -hmm. 4942. going to be a 12 string. It's going to be a 12 string classical? Or? No. It's just going to have a narrow string right. space. I'll get that sucker up and ready for you tomorrow. Um, be done the tomorrow. Sometime in the afternoon. Or um, What kind of money do you think? You're probably looking at fifty-three fifty. Okay. By the time we're done. 
<laughs> exactly. That's what tax. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta pay the state. Yeah. But, oh, look at this one. Yeah, right. it'll be tomorrow afternoon sometime. Well, that's it. That's our tour of uh, Dale Roberts Instrument Repair with a chance for you and anybody else who's watching to get their guitar and their instrument fixed. And I hope we'll do it. Uh, his phone number is right here on the screen. Address on the screen, Southside and Beach. Come see him anytime. Uh, Chris, Dale, thanks for having me. You have a great day. Thank you. So long, Dr. Johnson.